When you think of father-son duos who were able to make it into the NBA, a few names come to mind. The Curry brothers and their father Dell, Michael Thompson and Clay Thompson, Doc Rivers and Austin Rivers, Tim Hardaway Jr. and Tim Hardaway Sr., Rick Barry and Brent Barry, among others. Sometimes the father has a better NBA career than their son, and sometimes it's the son who outshines their dad. But for a father and son to both make it to the NBA is not only rare, it's even more unlikely for both a father and son to become stars in their respective eras. And we have yet to see some of the greatest players of all time feature a son showing the same skills and talent as their father. Michael Jordan's firstborn son Jeffrey could barely make it on a Division I college squad. Magic Johnson and his sons, well, never really had an interest in basketball. Kareem and his sons never made it to an NBA level. And we've never come across a situation in which a father and son played in the league at the same time. And it's why fans, the media, the league at large can't wait for one of the most anticipated father-son pairings of all time, one of the greatest players to ever play the game and the face of the NBA for two decades in LeBron James, to play with his eldest son, Bronny James. There's just one problem. This man is not good enough to be in the NBA. And quite frankly, never really has. For a player that has so much hype surrounding their entrance into the league because of the gravity it would bring to LeBron James and him playing with his son, a player who has had all eyes on him since he was a kid, so much focus and attention, despite the talent he possesses compared to some of the prospects of his class, is actually quite astounding. You often see cases of nepotism in any profession, but this is taking it to the next level. How bad, you might ask? Well, let's talk about it. As always, if you're new to the channel and you like this type of content, it would mean a great deal to me if you subscribe to help the channel grow, and in return, I'll be providing more NBA content like this. Back in 2002, when LeBron James was first coming onto the scene as one of the greatest high school basketball players scouts had ever seen with his insane athleticism, speed, ball handling, and the ability to impact the floor in so many ways with his court vision, scoring, and defense, there had never been a player who was as hyped as LeBron James coming out of high school. It's not every day you see a player called the chosen one or the king or being touted as the next face of the league before ever stepping foot on an NBA basketball court. And while the hype, attention, and excitement surrounding LeBron James entering the league was sometimes seen as extreme, he was every bit worth the hype and exceeding expectations for what he would ultimately become as a player. And when LeBron's son started playing basketball as a child and started showing early signs of his dad's prowess and skill set, the hype instantly became a focus for scouts despite Bronny being at such a young age. Bronny James started receiving letters of interest and scholarship offers when he was just 10 years old. And from prominent programs like Duke and Kentucky, he would continue to receive interest from a host of schools even before entering high school. These college programs didn't know how good Bronny would ultimately become, but for a chance to have LeBron James' son at their school would instantly bring viewership and revenue. Bronny would go on to first appear in the high school recruiting rankings top 100 list in his sophomore year where ESPN rated him as a four-star recruit and was considered a top 30 player in the class of 2023. But by the end of his junior season, he quickly fell down the ranks to 52nd. And while Bronny rose the ranks slightly in his senior season, he remained a four-star recruit throughout his entire high school career. And don't get me wrong, that's still incredible in and of itself as someone who played high school basketball competitively to be able to get that high in the rankings in the top 100. But for the level of interest, attention, and hype from some of the top college programs as well as NBA level interest for which team could consider drafting him in 2024 for a mid-level recruit is honestly quite mind-boggling. Most recruits at that level never receive interest in scholarship offers from some of the top programs in the NCAA, and they generally aren't perceived to be one-and-done type players who will declare for the draft after their freshman season. Here's the thing. Bronny is actually a fine player, like despite all the hype, he was one of the better high school basketball athletes of his class, a solid defender, great on-ball defense, one of the better perimeter defenders of his class, and like his dad, high level basketball IQ and knowing his spots, knowing where to find his teammates, and then on offense, he's mainly better skilled at being an off-ball spot-up shooter, and he's got good decent range shooting it from deep, at least at the high school level. He's an unselfish player and shows great awareness on the court in getting guys involved. The main problem though is Bronny turns the ball over at a high rate because of his poor handles and that's been exasperated even further since playing at the collegiate level where his offense and shooting have become even more inconsistent when you're seeing higher level defense. With heightened competition and the talent level at the NCAA, he struggled more to drive through traffic and get clean looks in creating his own shot. Now I don't want to minimize the medical incident and Bronny's overall health after sustaining cardiac arrest in practice for the Trojans early on before the start of the season, that's incredibly scary and especially serious at his age and having a congenital heart defect that he'll have to live with for the rest of his life. I have no doubt 
that has an impact on his overall game, his endurance and stamina. And without a doubt, that is going to raise questions about the future of his career when having a heart defect being so young. So I don't mean for this to come off insensitive when talking about his performance in college knowing what he's gone through and missing a portion of the season and getting limited minutes as a result of it. But when Barani has been playing for the USC Trojans, a USC team that isn't very good, mind you, he really has been anything but short of underwhelming, averaging just 5.8 points per game in 20 minutes of play, shooting 35% from the floor, 27% from three, and 61% from the free throw line. Obviously, college player stats aren't going to be as efficient from what you see in the NBA, but even by college players, player standards. This is well below average and again on a bad USC team. It's not like this is one of the top teams in the country that is packed with talent and there are too many options on offense for Bronny to really have a chance to crack the rotation. It's sad to say, but he's just not good enough. He's not good enough to really make a meaningful impact at the Division I collegiate level as a freshman. How are we supposed to believe that he's going to create an impact at the professional level? And you're seeing it now where Bronny initially went from being projected in the early second round to the late first round in most mock draft boards in 2024 to now not even being projected to be drafted on all of the major mock draft boards from the media outlets and in a weak draft class, mind you. But while most of these mock drafts have started leaving LeBron off their list to be drafted, it's almost a foregone conclusion that some team will be going after Bronny, whether into the second round or potentially picking him up as an undrafted player purely for the fact that LeBron has stated on multiple occasions that he desires to play with his son. Whatever team Bronny goes to, that's where LeBron will also be heading, who has a player option in the final year of his deal, which he will most likely decline and take the bet minimum to go play with his son. Unless, of course, the Lakers snag Bronny to be able to keep LeBron for one more year and try to run things back to see if they can go for one last title in what would likely be LeBron's last season in the NBA at the age of 40. LeBron hasn't indicated that next season would be his last in the league, but he has said all he wants to do is to keep playing until his son joins the league. And because of the name, Bronny James will be able to play in the NBA despite teams otherwise having no interest in a player of his skill set if it were any other college athlete. Someone like Bronny would need to stay in college to see how they continue to develop in their sophomore, junior, and senior seasons to show scouts they really are NBA ready and can develop into a fine NBA player. The big question is, is it worth it? For whatever team that does take a chance on drafting Bronny just so they can have a 40-year-old LeBron on their roster for one season. And knowing the kind of headlines viewership that would come with it for the first ever father-son duo in the league. It would garner massive amounts of media attention the first time they step onto the court together and one of them assists to the other for a score it will be on the top of every media outlet's highlight reel. It would make any team small market or big market relevant and drive a lot of revenue but all just for one season. One season before LeBron sets off into retirement or at least finally starts to decline in his 22nd season in the NBA. Tying the record for most seasons played by a player in NBA history, by the way. Leaves the game of basketball, and then you have Bronny James, who will still garner media attention as LeBron's son, but not an NBA caliber level player that likely won't make it to his next contract in the league. Is it worth using a draft pick on Bronny James, even if it's a second round pick that could have otherwise been used on an actual NBA level player? If it means one season with LeBron, some teams might say that's worth it. And I'm sure for the Lakers, who know their window to win now is so small, they just might do it to keep LeBron happy and within the organization and retire as a Laker. Let me know what you guys think, though. Do you think Bronny is an NBA-level talent or not? Which team do you see LeBron and Bronny playing on next season? Should Bronny, in fact, declare for the draft? Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.